don't look at yourself on the monitor. <laughs> ah. All right, I guess I'll do an intro. Here we go. Uh, I have to start this video by apologizing and saying, mm. you were right. He was right, y'all. <laughs> I hear it all the time. Hey there, I'm Joni Simon. I'm a food photographer here to teach you all about food photography on the bite shot. And this right here is... Ryan Simon. <laughs> and your official title? A husband. Husband. <laughs> and man of many talents. Oh. A, a man with an impressive laboratory. Mm, thank and you. And the reason I need to apologize to him is he had a really great idea a number of months ago. And I said, no, no, that won't work. Do you remember what happened? I do. <laughs> But I'd like to hear you talk about it. Okay. So, you know, I get in my brain that there are certain props that I want for my food photography. Mm -hmm. Like that French cutting board that I just absolutely had to have. And I found it on Etsy and I bought it. Super, I love that piece. Um, you know, different like cookware, just different things. And so I had seen on a lot of people's Instagrams these little antique sugar shakers, right? The little sugar sifter dealie mm -hmm. that looks just like this. Look, I have it right here. Um, but I could not find one. I scoured Etsy. Mm -hmm. I scoured eBay antique shops we even went all the way to california yeah we scoured like we had our friends with us and we're like if you see like we were in all these great antique shops so like if you see one of these sugar shakers buy it i don't care yeah. how much it costs we didn't find it but what we did find was we were at a houseware store and we found this one which in terms of shape and yeah. everything else was great but it's stainless steel and it's perfect and i was like i don't want it perfect yeah. we want it to look funky yeah it's very modern yeah you know and I wanted something a little more antique. And you're like, you know, I could antique that for you. I was like, no, no, you can't do that. But I bought it anyway. Like, oh, I'll just let him try it out. Ryan, look what he did, you guys. So here is, I'll do a little side by side here so mm -hmm. you can see the comparison. But look at all this texture and mm -hmm. antiquing and the patina. Oh, the, patina. the magic is in the patina. And so I thought, you know what? Now that I have publicly apologized to my husband, um, two, just to give a little context, because there are definitely some technical elements in what you're doing today yes. that are very important to know as somebody who's worked in metal work. So just a little context of your background. You actually studied sculpture. Yeah, I did. I studied sculpture and um, I actually, that's my undergraduate degree is in sculpture. And then of course uh, we got married and we moved off to New York and I worked there as a production manager in a bronze casting foundry where we did artwork for artists and things like that. Um, so I have a lot of experience in working with metals and getting the kind of look and result you want out of them. And so why on earth? I would not listen to him and say, oh yeah, you know a little bit about metal work, <laughs> to believe that he could actually antique um, a stainless steel sugar sifter. But he's done it, and we're going to show you exactly how if you want to do it too. Okay, so very first, before we get into this, major disclaimer, before mm -hmm. you try this at home, right? What right. are We're working with some pretty serious stuff here today. We are working with some serious stuff. Now, this is absolutely something you can do, but you do need to realize that there are precautions right. that are going to be good for you if you want to do this for a long time. <laughs> Stay healthy. Yes. Don't asphyxiate yourself. Don't no. consume noxious gases and right. all the things that we're working with because we're working with serious chemicals We are today. working with some serious chemicals, right. So, of course, gloves to cover your skin, uh, cover your clothes, any kind of, you know, thing they could get splashed. So you got your snappy jacket. That's my snappy jacket. You should get a snappy jacket too. <laughs> this is you your look chance. official. Yep. Uh, and then some breathing protection uh, I, is highly recommended, especially uh, a real respirator with cartridges that are good for acid gas and organic vapors. So your so, like coronavirus mask may not cut not it. Not going to cut it. And okay. the one they sell at the hardware store, probably not going to either. You need to ask someone there, do you have cartridges? for acid gas organic vapors if you can't find them at the hardware store you can definitely order them online on amazon or what have you we'll be sure to have links to everything we're talking about mm -hmm. here today link below for you yeah and then good old eye protection get your glasses so it's just like chemistry class just like chemistry <laughs> class and then one other thing to note too is that we are doing this in a ventilated area mm -hmm. so we are in your workshop we've yes. got the big door open and then you also have a fan a fan going for airflow Gotcha. So mm -hmm. safety first, everybody. Absolutely. 
All right, so first step, we're gonna get into patina and what we're gonna spray on it and that whole process. But before we even get there, there's a very first important step. Absolutely, you must prepare the piece. Hmm. This, as it comes from the store, is coated in all kinds of uh, material that keeps it from getting uh, rusted or scratched or things like that. All that is getting in the way of doing what we want to do with it. So we have got to get this nice surface area all scratched up and any coatings that are on the surface of the metal off of it. So we are the weirdos who are taking perfectly good brand new implements and jacking them up. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> so what I recommend, of course, and there's various tools you could use for this, but honestly, you can't go wrong with just good old sandpaper. Get some wet and dry sandpaper from your local hardware store and look for something, get a couple grits, one very fine grit, something in like a thousand grit, and then something a little coarser. Um, and you'll want those. You'll want to start out with a heavy grit and go to a lighter and wet the piece periodically and wet that sandpaper and just kind of rub all the way around until everything you see that's shiny and glossy looks dull and kind of uh, matte mm -hmm. on there. Now, if you uh, also, if you want to speed things up, you can use some power tools, of course. There's uh, abrasive wheels that are available also at your regular old hardware store, and you can hook that to your drill or drill press and really go at it, and that'll work a lot faster, but it's all about your comfort level. Right. Some people aren't quite comfortable working with power tools. Right. So I definitely understand that. Yeah, you've got some pretty intense tools here in your laboratory. <laughs> yes. <Mwah. laughs> <laughs> also, a good tool to have if you have a rotary tool, like a Dremel type, is you get a little uh, wire wheel for that, or you can also get abrasive pads for that and use that. It's a little less intimidating maybe than a big sander or something like that and a little more delicate for people who like to have a little control over what they're doing where. Mm -hmm. And then one other cool tip that I like that you use too is how you use the sponge mm. to back up the sandpaper. Yes, definitely. If you're going to use sandpaper, and I recommend anyone even who does use the power tools to also use the sandpaper, uh, you just kind of fold the sandpaper over the little bit of sponge mm -hmm. and that gives it a little extra sort of cushion. So as you push down, that sponge is pushing back and it also helps conform to awkward surfaces on the metal. So once you have it completely sanded down and we've removed all the glossiness mm -hmm. and it no longer looks like perfect, what's the next step? Now's the time for the patina. Okay. So remember, patina is a chemical, and the way it works is it brings out colors in the metal by sort of acting aggressively on that metal by oxidizing whatever uh, particular uh, metallic alloy it is. So sometimes that's copper, sometimes it's stainless steel, sometimes it's aluminum. just depends, and there's different chemicals to do different things to different metals. So hmm. you've got to do a little research to say, what kind of look do I want? For us, we're using uh, Birchwood Casey stainless steel blackener um, which is um, available online through Amazon too and so it's a particular chemical to get a particular look kind of that black used antique look yeah because I mean I do have quite a few antique metal pieces here at the mm -hmm. house and so we kind of did some comparisons and I showed you you know I really want the sugar sifter to look like this in terms of color and texture and so yes. that's why you selected this particular patina mm -hmm. yeah okay. now if you want to get all artsy and do something that kind of looks rusty well there might be another patina that will give you that red rusty brown you know um, so think about this kind of process too for your um, what do you call those? The backgrounds? Oh, yeah. The surfaces. The surfaces for your surfaces. Oh, I've got like a big sheet of metal out in the back. We can go jack mm -hmm. that up too. That might be a whole nother video, folks. Stay <laughs> tuned. So you've got your protective gear on, right? Your glasses, mm -hmm. your respirator, your gloves. Um, your jacket. Now's the time to go ahead and apply that patina. Now, the stuff that I've bought comes with, in, with a little spray bottle. Uh, so you can just spray it on. And uh, there are hot patinas and cold patinas. Working with hot patinas means that you're heating up whatever it is you're going to patina. That's a little more advanced of a process. Fortunately, this is a cold patina. We don't have to worry about any of that. So 
we'll just go ahead and spray it on over the piece. Try to cover the whole piece pretty, pretty liberally. And have something underneath it too. That's right. And be careful that it's not a metal thing. Okay. So a little piece of parchment paper works great. Wax paper will too, with cold, since it's cold. Anything hot, you wouldn't want to use wax paper. But if you try to use aluminum foil directly, you'll get uh, contamination. Little bits of the aluminum ions will get into your patina and they'll change the color into, into unpredictable ways that you don't want. Well, you're living on the edge because you got a piece of aluminum foil under that parchment. Yeah, you can see it there and that's to protect your nice baking sheet. <laughs> I was willing to risk it a little bit. Living on the edge. As long as I had that parchment paper but in between. So just keep the metals away. <laughs> Stick with a parchment paper or something else underneath it so that you're... Because whatever is underneath is potentially going to be damaged. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And these chemicals, eh, you don't want to ingest them either. So yeah. probably don't do them on your good cookware. Yeah, don't do them on something you're going to eat off of. Right. <laughs> good. So you can see we've, we're applying that uh, patina pretty liberally over it. And look how dark it gets really fast. So just, fast. Yeah, within just a few seconds seconds all of a sudden it's it's you know dark gray you know kind of that charcoal look so once you've kind of got it coated you can let it sit there for a little bit um i would go ahead and when you're like ready, for how long uh you know you know really just like 30 seconds okay. uh, to a minute is fine just to make sure that it, that patina is working on that metal oxidizing it as much as it can what would happen if we left it for like 20 minutes? It, well, it would it would keep working and it would turn like jet black. Okay. And that might be cool. Go ahead and experiment, folks. See what you get. And the kind of nice thing about this is you can't go wrong. You can always walk it back a bit. Mm. So if it gets too dark, hey, this next step is for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> take, take the piece and go back to the water you were using maybe when you were wet sanding. And uh, just kind of get the piece wet and uh, take your sponge or if you have a scotch bright pad, the kind of green pads that you mm -hmm. get for washing dishes, those are beautiful for, for patinaing. And just take it and rub back along the surface of the metal to kind of take some of that patina off. Gotcha. Now, you'll see that the, the look becomes richer and more beautiful. The flatness of the oxides from the patina are being washed off to reveal kind of the actual the effect on the metal underneath. Hmm. And so it's going to lighten it up and then also kind of add some depth. So you want to go back and forth a couple times probably where you're brushing back that patina and then adding more. And you'll continue to get kind of a richer and richer look. Yeah. And so just like anything, and just like in photography, there's a certain amount of experimentation, you know. Mm -hmm. I, at this point, I think I have three or four of these. And we're going to try it on some other stainless pieces that I have. And I feel like the more that we do this process, the more that we're going to discover, uh, you know, the character you can, you can uncover. But I think you've mm -hmm. done a brilliant job with this piece. How yeah. many layers on this final one did you go in terms of like applications of patina? Yeah, this was probably only three applications of patina because this uh, is such a sort of a, uh, a vivid black or a uh, mm -hmm. potent black and uh, a very fast acting patina. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to do a whole lot. Yeah. And that because in terms of the color, I still wanted sort of that lighter metallic, mm -hmm. but enough kind of dinginess to show the, the worn nature of it. Yeah, exactly. We wanted it to look antique and not so then even you'll have an opportunity here at this point to add some distressing to the piece. Mm -hmm. And if, since we're talking specifically about antiquing, you know, you think about those antiques. They're old. They've been knocked around. They've been dropped. They've been left in the oven and baked in a pie. Who knows? You know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, just sit Grandma left the sugar sifter in the pie again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you win the prize. You found the sifter. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Yeah, but we want it to look like it's been in the back of the drawer and it's been poked and prodded and bumped against everything Banged else. around. Yeah, so feel free to kind of look around and experiment. You can, a hammer is a wonderful tool for this. <laughs> now, you don't want to go overboard with it. Sure. You want it to be believable, you know, so uh, don't pound the heck out of it. Right. Just give it a nice tap. Subtlety. Yeah, subtlety. A nice little ding. And work from there. You go, ooh, that made a nice little impression. A little scratch, yeah. a little divot. A little scratch, a little, nothing overt. You know, just subtle, subtle. Mm. And uh, try different things. You know, try the hammer. Try uh, the back of a nail or uh, set a screw against it and tap it. Or get a brick and just on the edge of it. Mm -hmm. Something to give it kind of an interesting character. Mm -hmm. You know, and even like in this case with the sugar sifter, we've got that wire mesh. When these get old, those wire meshes never look perfect. No. So go ahead, poke some holes in it with a fork or with a nail or something that scratch it a little bit. 
give it that kind of kicked around, yeah. used. Think about the story. What's the story of this yeah. particular piece? Who had it? Who owned it? How did they care for it? How have they used it? You know, that definitely will also infuse story into your imagery that it'll suddenly transport somebody to remembering their grandmother's kitchen or um, something they grew up with. So just think about that time and that place and what it would look like if it truly had been beat up. Yeah. So once you've distressed your piece, maybe you don't want to go right to being done. You want to go ahead and add one more layer of patina because the scratching and things will reveal the underneath metal and we don't want that to be quite so obvious. So now's a great opportunity to experiment with maybe some different application techniques. Go ahead and take your patina onto a, maybe a paintbrush mm -hmm. and just kind of feather it on in some places more than others maybe. So you're creating different textures and looks. So paintbrushes are great for this. Sponges are great for this. Kind of go wild. You can uh, grab a toothpick and maybe a little, little traces oh, or something. Cool. Just try and see what looks good, mm -hmm. you know. And sort of having some differentiation in the color pattern really gives it a feeling of legitimacy, less constructed, like maybe this really is an old thing and that's arrived this way naturally. So now once you have applied the patina, we've rinsed it off and we're getting ready for either more distressing or another layer, layer of patina, mm -hmm. you got to make sure to dry it. Yes, definitely. And this is one place where we talked about hot and cold patinas and we're not working with a hot patina. We don't need to heat hot up the patina, piece. Hot patina, hot <laughs> patina. Makes me want to dance. <laughs> hot patina. No, sorry. She's one hot patina. Uh, but this is one place where you will have to heat up the heat up the piece a little bit. So definitely that respirator is important here because mm. you don't want to be Applying breathing. Applying heat to chemicals. Yes, right. There's going to be residual liquid chemical in there somewhere and it's going to turn into vapor. You don't really want to breathe that in. Not good for you. So keep that respirator handy. Keep your ventilation on. And... Uh, and you really should be doing this maybe in between each round of sanding and patinas too. It's mm -hmm. just drying it a little bit. And it's also good for speeding up the patinian process. Mm -hmm. If you're in a real hurry, you can heat the piece. So just get a heat gun. Which a lot of you already have because we yep. love to use that to melt our cheeses and to toast things. And that's definitely one of my favorite food photography tools. Yes. Food or styling a, tools. Or a blowtorch. Oh, blowtorch. A little, little brulee torch. Would mm -hmm. that work? A brulee torch will work fine. Okay. Got enough or, butane. You can rock and roll. Yeah. Or even a hair dryer if that's all you got. Yeah. And just go ahead and, and go over the piece to dry it real good. So um, because the next step is going to be sealing in that look that we have. Now, I'm going to say this, and you'll want to kind of be thinking of this as you're doing the steps before it, but when we seal it, it's going to darken it just a little bit. So if you're really happy with the exact shade that it is, go back maybe and take another layer of patina off lightly with your scotch Bright, because mm -hmm. this next step, it's going to lock it in and darken it just a skosh. So uh, you'll see we've got some uh, matte sealer finisher. Okay. And that matte is important for you photographers. We don't want glossy surfaces, right. do we? No, this is so good for reflections. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and spray it all over with this. Doesn't take a lot. And to clarify, this particular matte sealer, this is specifically for metal. It is. Which would be different than like the matte Mod Podge that I use for like backdrops or right. other things or, right. um, you know, mattifying different things. Mm -hmm. This is specifically for metal. This is specifically, the stuff we have here is specifically for metal, specifically to work in cooperation with the patinas we have. Now, that's not to say those things won't work in a pinch if you've got some other kind of sealers. Mm -hmm. Um, even the stuff, the polyurethane stealer you get from the hardware store, that'll work too. Okay. Um, so if that's all you got, rock it. And then you just do a quick little spritz. Mm -hmm. a spritz forward, back, try to get all angles of it. And that will lock in that color, um, for a good long time. Now, after you've applied the matte spray, what if all of a sudden you look at it and you're like, eh, maybe that's darker than I wanted. Mm -hmm. Can you can you go back and redo it? You absolutely can. <laughs> yeah, grab that Scotch Bright pad mm -hmm. and just work that surface a little bit, and you'll you'll take off that uh, coating, that matte coating again, or even your uh, your sandpaper lightly going over it. We'll take that coating off. 
and you can start over again. So it's adding and taking away, adding and taking away until right. you get to right where you want to be. Right. Now, one important question. Mm -hmm. Now, I, granted, most of my food photography props I don't actually use in our real life kitchen, but mm -hmm. uh, are these food safe at this point or probably not? That is a great question <laughs> and no, these okay. are not food safe again. You don't want to be ingesting these patinas. <laughs> so <your> as <laughs> I am using this sugar sifter, now in this photograph of marshmallows, mm -hmm. I used a food safe sugar sugar sifter the one that is not patinaed the, the one that is mm -hmm. still stainless steel that's what i use to apply the sugar uh so that we can still eat the marshmallows after and then just the one that's the prop on the side to make it look like we use that one but don't actually use it because then you'll end up with contaminated marshmallows yeah so a big huge thank you to ryan for being a part of this week's video and for sharing this technique with us certainly if you attempt this and you go for it feel free to share your pictures over on instagram i'm at the bite shop feel free to tag me so we can give you that thumbs up he's not on instagram but i'll show it i'll show it to him anyway so <laughs> um with that do you have any parting words of wisdom for the artists out there just keep doing the great work you guys are doing, guys. I'm glad to be able to help in this little way, and I really hope some of you enjoy it. And if you like Ryan's little, like, mystery science corner over here and you want to have him back, let us know in the comments. Maybe Ooh. maybe we'll do something else. Maybe I'll start a channel. The Sculpt Shot? <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well, with that, you stay out of trouble, and we'll see you soon, okay? Bye. Bye.